Hello! I'm uh, still zoomed in from yesterday, so let me go ahead and pan out. We can see what's going on in Wonderland today. Alright, so hello again. And swapped over to a, I don't know, kind of like a galaxy thing going on. So, um, yeah, Wonderland is progressing pretty nicely. Um, there's a lot of little things that I'm still working on. Uh, we have our dodo in place. Today's prompt is uh, for the dodo bird, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, push this a little bit, uh, working on any characters that have faces remaining to go into the composition because I really want to go ahead and get uh, some of those background washes in. So today, while for a lot of people I don't think the dodo bird's a very exciting character, uh, we're going to make today an exciting stream because we're going to get so much done with uh, today's progress. So that's what I'm looking forward to today. Um, this arch is really bugging me. There's so many inconsistencies in it. Like this, this side's curved, this side's very straight. I, I have to work on this for a minute. Cause that is driving me batty. I keep coming back to this area because it isn't symmetrical. And clearly, I need to work on my, uh, my symmetry here. That's fine. I don't mind having weak spots. Everybody's got weak spots. For me, making things truly symmetrical is one of them. Uh, strangely enough, I don't feel like I have so much of a problem with portraits. Even though people's faces are supposed to be symmetrical, but, um, in reality, there's not a whole lot of perfect symmetry in nature. I think that's why that winds up being kind of a, a comfortable topic for me to work on sometimes. It was strange, I was talking about doing portraits yesterday uh, with, a, with a friend from Australia and... I was talking about uh, graphite portraits feel a lot like, um, like human photocopier work to me because it's just, you're mimicking those those different values. Like, you don't have color to bring in variation. I, I know I could be absolutely wrong, and I'm sure there is some stunning work out there that is just graphite and, and portrait work uh, between, like, hyper-realism stuff, uh, potentially people who are able to go ahead and take that work and be very creative with it. So that is very possible. It's just, for me, um, the, the portrait stuff I was doing before was very human human photocopier. And that wasn't exciting for me. Like, there's some characters that I really enjoy from, like, different TV shows, movies, things like that. So, like, fan art is not off the table for me. And if I really like a character, I am, I am likely to go ahead and do fan art. I, as far as, like, non-paid work in order to just push skills. But I'm a lot more interested now that I have uh, some different media that use color. Like, I did not have the patience for watercolor growing up. I just, I couldn't get it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't understand the skills. And I was impatient at that point in time in my life. So that's something I've, uh, I've certainly adapted to a bit as far as like being able to soften washes, working wet and wet, glazing, things like that. Um, washes are still a little dodgy for me because I am still new to actual watercolor. I've done a few pieces here and there, but I haven't done any, any real like significant wash pieces. And for me, that's very much so a uh, experimenting part of process. So it's good to know where weaknesses are that's that's certainly one of them uh you know I, I just need to have more work where where i'm practicing those washes and, and dealing with that and um if i do continue with the live streams and the monthly challenge for may i 
I don't know that I will. I'm certainly interested, but some scheduling will probably need to change. And that's kind of where I'm at as far as having like an official announcement. So that's waiting. Um, in the meantime, that's a lot less wonky than it was, so I'm, I'm much happier. That's a little low. Bring that up just a touch higher. That's better. Alright. And it could be that I'm just sitting here slightly at an angle, so I might sit up and it's still off. And yes it is. This side needs to come down a little lower. All the small things. But anyway, uh, like I said, while we are working on the dodo bird, we will get to painting him shortly. Um, I'm not doing a ton of washes or details for him because he is so far in the background. That's why I'm not even concerned about laying some paint on him first. I'm just really kind of running around Wonderland with, a, with the pencil. So we can go ahead and get these details in uh, because I really do want to get the frog footman's face done and the faces for the talking flowers. I don't know where I'm putting the talking flowers. I might just do like a, a bunch of them right here. Or maybe we'll, we'll toss them all down here, uh, like front and center in this piece. So I'm kind of kind of dodgy, but I'm, I'm leaning towards the talking flowers being somewhere on this side because uh, this half of Wonderland is definitely where it gets a little bit darker uh, in in tone and also in, in content. So, work in progress. But anyway, um, enough about that for just a moment. You know, you are always welcome to go ahead and comment. And with that said, I am going to do a quick check onto Twitch. And also catch a quick drink because I'm going quick and fast and trying to uh, trying to keep up with myself here. All right, so just a quick note of welcome to the chat. Great, and quick beverage. It's funny because, like, I really wanted to have these streams be calm and relaxing. And as I'm getting to the end, it's getting, like, all frenetic, anxious energy. And I just want to see Wonderland finish coming into, uh, into its own. But, uh, let's get back to this frog footman. I want to put a face on him. I already had a general idea. Just one of those wonderful little froggy faces, and I'm going to move my brushes. I'm, I am starting to think I need to just put my, my brush cup here, but that means I'll be sifting through brushes during filming, and that's, that's why I haven't done it. Because I wanted to avoid some of that sound. But you know what? The sound of me working and the sound of me having more space on my desk is welcome. Yeah, this is a random assortment of brushes. You can see like uh, quite a few of these have like the, the red handles from the Velvet Touch series. Those are the my, my current favorites as I'm scaling up with uh, some of my brushes. Some of these are not. Um, some of these are... are really cheap random brushes. A couple are like uh, Sterling Silver, Sterling Studios. That one's a, a nice liner. I believe everybody needs like a script liner or a dagger liner. Um, yeah, I have not unpacked my daggers in here. Those are a brush that I really want to play with more. I really need to unpack them. I have them in, uh, in my watercolor bag from a bit ago, and I have not broken them out, and I really should, so that way they're sitting in this cup ready for me to use. But, uh, ooh, actually, if I'm putting my spotter in here, I definitely want to go grab my lid. And I have that way up here. And I'm also, like, 90 miles a minute 
today because um, some of my schedule changed today. Uh, so right after the stream, I am going to be in a rush to go ahead and um, get the stream uploaded for uh, YouTube. So work in progress. Uh, da -da -da. Any other interesting brushes? Which one are you? Uh, Menta by Royal Langnickel. That, that's not a bad uh, cheap brush. I don't use this one very often. It's a size 12. It's a nice size. Alright, now they sound like a over-caffeinated squirrel. I'm going to put my brushes down. And uh, get back over to the frog footman here. Jeez. <sighs> Madness! Maybe I'll get some other glazes in. I'm also kind of like, eh, I'll get to the details. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit while I'm working on the frog footman. This will be a lot, lots and lots of panning and zooming here and there. Great. Let me just work on his froggy face. And I should have made this a little bit wider. So let's go ahead and adjust that. So, yeah, you, you see how the, like I have this like crazy energy today as far as working on the uh, the elements of Alice in Wonderland. That's something that I would want to avoid for uh, the next challenge if if I'm doing Mermaid and. What I'm planning there is actually changing my whole approach and making that strongly a drawing challenge. So, if that all works out, then what I'll be doing is working on uh, drawing prompts for the whole month and I can go ahead and have those go ahead and take the shape of individual prints or a coloring book maybe even stickers. I can scale some of them down depending on how much detail there is. That's something that I've noticed with uh, with line work heavy pieces that there's only so far you can scale them down before the uh, la la that detail winds up just becoming noise. I don't like that. We're gonna change that. We have some eyes. Just in general, blocked out for this frog footman. I feel like I, he's at the wrong angle. Make sure it looks like that. He could indeed be staring at the queen, doing his job. Well, not staring at the queen, looking at the queen. He's offering the, uh... The flamingo and the, uh... The hedgehog. And so you'll have to let me know, what do you guys think? Should I keep going? Has this been interesting? Is there stuff that should change? Because with that type of uh, feedback, I'm able to, to grow and make all of this a better channel for you. And I know I certainly love to catch watercolor artists at work. There's quite a few channels that I, I tend to watch uh, pretty frequently as far as just seeing how different artists approach the medium, how they use the materials. I really like frogs. I think that's pretty evident with me shutting up for a minute and focusing on the, the drawing here. So 
this other eye is just not looking great. I haven't drawn too many frogs in profile. Apparently I need to do that more. Or not not a true profile, um, a three-quarter view. I really need to draw more frogs. Now I'm trying to remember, are there any frog prompts for next month? <laughs> So what are we going to name our frog footman? Should he have a name? Or is he like a red shirt and you just don't bother giving him a name as like uh, crewman number three? Yeah. So just uh, getting a little bit of graphite off of our frog here. That way I am all set to go ahead and paint him in when the prompt comes up. guys but I think he's kind of cute should we give him like a, a powdered wig or just go for a you know classic uh, suit it's definitely sticking with that uh, kind of 18th century vibe going on Alright, so that's another face down. And then the frog footman is tomorrow's prompt, so we'll be painting him tomorrow. Um, just doing a quick time check, seeing where we're at. And I think next we'll get into where the talking flowers are. I'm only going to spend about 10 more minutes uh, going ahead and blotting in other background characters uh, if I can figure that out today just so that way we can get it into those background details because I really want this background to start uh, start really pulling the, the whole composition together. That I'm really trying to have it so when we get to the prompt on the 30th that is you quote unquote your choice, that I'm not going to be spending that whole time working on details in the background. I kind of want to, to get uh, as far as I can with that progress. Great. 
Um, some of these shadows need to be reglazed. Just for my liking. Some of the uh, transitions are a little, a little all over the place, but that's okay. Um, the dodo. I don't love where he is in the composition, which I should back up so you can see him. I don't like how he's not interacting with uh, with the water here, but that's also intentional because if I'm uh, moving forward with stickers, then I want to make sure that he's able to be clearly there, like ab able to be peeled right off and not affecting the uh, the background so much. Alright, so we'll do a quick check on Twitch. And actually, you know, I want to adjust that. I want to go with a, a bow style. I was going more for just straight ties, but I'm like, eh, I actually like that hanging in like kind of like a, a little bow. All right, so moving on uh, to Twitch. Hello, hello. And all right, so not a whole lot going on there. Uh, let's move into these talking flowers. Originally, I thought that they would just be like right along this edge in the woods. And I think they could be. Uh, without interfering with where the Mad Hatter is in the composition. I could probably even put some maybe like here along the back edge of the table, but that gets into being too close to the Dormouse. I think that would be kind of rough to, uh, to make stickers there. I'm trying to think about it ahead of time that there's like an invisible like outline around each of them where you're going to be able to pull them out of their setting easily enough where they'll feel like a full sticker. Um, Mushrooms is one of the prompts and uh, that's actually coming up on the 28th. So my plan is for this set of three mushrooms to be all together as one and I would probably make it so like the, the caterpillar and the hookah and a little bit of the smoke would come up with him as far as uh, being a sticker there so you would not get the the mushroom that's his base but you would get these other three and he's small enough that you maybe could put him on this little one maybe so I'm trying to think about a lot of these things ahead of time which is why if you've been with me throughout the whole process of wonderland then you've definitely seen uh, me stop and think a lot about how these elements are fitting together and uh, how it's going to, to convey this world. And this frog footman not having pupils is actually kind of making me squirrely. I want to do some eyes. I want to do... I know what, what I want to do. Uh, some frogs have uh, these really neat slits for their eyes. Some of them have the, like, the more round ones, but I, I want to go with the uh, the other style. And I'm blanking on how they sit. The frogs have so many different types of eyes. There's a red-eyed tree frog. I recommend taking a look at those as a reference for for work, uh, just because it's really interesting how they have like this gold lattice looking layer of of their uh, of their eyes but um for this guy i want to go with the uh it's kind of a, a sideways slant and then there's this little vertical bit kind of like a almost like a plus sign Mm 
just hoping that I'm able to get that detail at that scale. That looks pretty good. I don't know how well it's going to look for this outside edge eye. So we probably wouldn't see all that detail because of the, uh, how the eye is in profile. I think that's close enough. Alright, and hopefully you guys can see that detail. Which, you know what, I'm not even gonna zoom. You guys can see that tomorrow with the frog footman. Um, I really need to blot in some flowers with faces. Uh, I think I am going to put those guys up here. Maybe like one right there. Uh, another one right there. You know what? I don't like that composition. We'll leave this as some of the land for the woods. I like that there's a path that runs behind this tree up into the woods. So there's different ways to get around in Wonderland. I don't mind some of the background being a little bit more complex because Wonderland is a really unique place. Let's fix this tree trunk. And then readjust our grouping of flowers. I don't want it to go too similar to how the, the mushrooms are here. Um, I want it to be an interesting arrangement visually. So we'll probably have like the center one being the high point. And then we'll have the other two. Maybe shape it so that way the faces are this way. I'm creating this for like the, the petals being cupped and that way this one's facing off to the side a little bit. And uh... Yeah, I think I'll do something similar for this one, but this one will be like looking up more like they're like a little singing trio. I at least want an idea for where their faces are and oh, well, I really do like the uh, how they portrayed the white rose in Disney's Alice in Wonderland cartoon. I wouldn't approach a character like that because I think she is strictly in the Disney version and not in uh, Tenniel's illustrations. I actually don't recall Tenniel's illustrations for the uh, the talking flowers. I'm actually doing a quick search. Uh, let me just go ahead and add Tenniel. Okay, so they are, uh, you have like tiger lilies that look like regular tiger lilies, and then you have a bunch of, uh, like roses with, uh, faces. So that is the Tenual illustration. I don't know why that didn't stick in my mind more. So I could do roses. And they are in black and white, so they could be even white roses. But, I think I'm just going to do, uh, actually, I really don't know. Um, I'm just kind of, kind of playing with this little hip sway for the stem, and this one's going to be kind of like, just kind of jiving over here, like they're singing. I don't know why to me, the talking flowers are singing. I mean... Singing is a form of a uh, speech. And then it'll be a little sassy flower. I have some leaves. And they're gonna be curled around on what would be personified as hips.
Alright, and that way I have a general idea of where the faces are. I'll figure out petals and more leaves later. But what this does is it opens us up tomorrow when I'm working on the frog footman to put in those wild splashes because now I know where all the faces are. I'll be able to act quickly as far as removing errant splashes that aren't where I want them at. So, good stuff. Good stuff. I'm very happy now. I feel like they are... Hmm... You know what? Maybe they'll fit there better. And my indecisiveness. I really like the, the pose and the grouping, but I feel like that's really close to his hat, and I might have a little bit more space right here to put them in. It's kind of a weird area as far as this setting, but I feel like they'll fit the composition better. I don't want to clutter up over here too much. I really want the uh, the the field for the croquet court to to be really vibrant, and then the rest of Wonderland will be a little bit less manicured, a little bit more wild. So, yes, this exact pose, but just right here. Oh, why do I do these things to myself? And she's gonna stand a little taller than the others. And she's gonna be pointing more up. Great. Quick little sway. I hope that I'm going to be able to push enough depth here because I do not want it to look like these flowers are sprouting out of this slice of cake. So that is not where I'm trying to go with this. And yeah, I, I gave her an extra sassy angle there. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that or not. And I feel like that's that's a bit better. Go ahead and erase these three and see where the composition stands. I could also do them separate because it just says talking flowers. They don't have to be a grouping together. But I want each of the characters, uh, each of the prompts to really have like a moment to, to shine where, where possible. I do want to knock down the pencil lines here. Because doing those splashes, basically any lines that are covered may be stuck. I might not be able to lift them. I don't know, you'll have to let me know. Do you think they're uh, far enough out of the way that they're not going to be... Uh, Looking like they're sprouting out of this piece of cake. I'm still a little bit iffy. Maybe if I put them slightly further over, like right in here. Instead. It's just kind of like this weird little overlap between them, and then... The middle one would be here, and the side ones would be here. I think I like that more. I'm going to leave that exactly as is, so I can go ahead and rework that later. Uh, I'll probably rework that when I'm doing the prep work for Frog Footman because he's completely penciled in. I'll be able to mess with the uh, flowers before we start the stream tomorrow, because I don't want to tie up any more time with placing the flowers in the composition, but we should be all prepped tomorrow to do the frog footman and those background washes that'll start really putting Wonderland together. All right. Or I might even do it today. You know, let me breathe. <laughs> That's what I need to do. I need to breathe. All right. And just for the heck of it, since I have my whole little stack of brushes sitting out. I'm grabbing my number four brown from uh, Princeton Velvet Touch. This should have a pretty good point on it because I haven't been using this one. And I'm just going to blot in the dodo 
um, kind of leaning towards blues and purples for this guy. And especially leaning on those, those more muted tones since he's further back in the composition. I'm probably going to use a bunch of uh, Payne's Gray and some bits of Carbazole Violet to go ahead and tinge in a little more color. A little bit of Indanthrone Blue if I feel like I need to, to push more on the blue side. Ooh, and I noticed the music stopped. Is this just a really short playlist, or...? Yes, this was a short playlist. Alright. It wasn't bad. I, I like that. Um, this one was called Cinematic Mood, and I think I will go ahead and download that. It's just, uh... Not as long as I had hoped. Interesting. I found a playlist that's called Music for Time Lapses. So we'll go ahead and put that on. Um, the Dodo is a strange character in Wonderland. Because he just is this bird and just randomly has human hands. My color's still a little bit strong. I need to blot that. And this sharp line that I need to soften out a bit. And now that is a little too much water. Like, okay, fine. I'm just going to do a wash. Go for that hand. I'm just going to start off our dodo with that uh, hands gray, just as a full wash, except for the hand. I don't want it to be too dark. I'll go ahead and add subsequent washes to go ahead and shade that further if I need to. I'm also avoiding where the cane is, so even though it is so far back feeling like I don't want that to be um, I don't want it to be too cool of a color but I still want it to convey some some warmth um, and by that I mean like I'll probably go into some uh, some neutral tint instead of sepia so it's just warm compared to the paint's gray, not, not truly warm. I'll go back in and shadow that hand with some of the uh, Carbazole Violet. Uh, and if you've been watching the whole time, you know that's also the same name for uh, Windsor Violet and also for... Um, the oxazine. We could say dot violet or purple. I've I've noticed some brands use violet and purple pretty interchangeably. Alright, so we have a general outline. I know because of how wet that wash was, I am going to have generally hard edges. That's fine by me. You know, go ahead and uh, give him some definition back there, um, being slightly silhouetted as far as like how bright the sun is and other elements that are going to be back there. The temperature is going to be really weird in this area, just in general, because of that, that push and pull between being this far back in the composition, which naturally makes things cooler and more blurry, uh, versus being in a warm area of the composition. So a lot of things over here are like sun saturated and bright and shiny. Then over here is where you uh you get your your stormy area with the uh, the Jabberwock, so it's it's going to be weird as I'm working on this. It might look a little kind of like choppy and incohesive, and that's a risk I, I'm willing to take. Uh, let's see. So we have our dodo. I want to go ahead and go into his face with a light wash of the quinacridone burnt orange 
slightly muted, uh, slightly washed down, so it was pretty, pretty thin. I just feel like this, this face area, I want to do that just a touch warmer. And that is too much, and I got some on the rocks. So, blot, blot, blot. So pigment down, lift it up, back and forth. And you know what? I'm going to grab a little bit more of that wash. Maybe a touch stronger. I'm just going to do the feet with this. Just so I'm blotting in something. I can always tilt it or reglaze it. I could probably go a little bit more quinacridone gold. I really should throw on my readers. So here I am doing teeny details that I can't just see right over because of where the camera is. That's one of those things that, you know, if the uh, the stream's taking off and things are building like I'd like, I would go ahead and get a new lens for my camera that would allow me to go ahead and mount it a little bit higher up where I still have the same zoom factor, but I'm able to get closer to the work. So it's just a, a weird place. Um, I'm going into the, the beak for our dodo here with a bit of the, well, I was going to say deep scarlet, but I'm going to cast this. You know what? I, I think I will. I, I think I will go in with the deep scarlet because I really love that color. But I'm going to do the edges with the uh, pyrrole crimson. That way I can go ahead and tip that a little bit cooler. That's one of those you'll be able to read that these are the character has warm colors, but the shading I'll go ahead and do with cooler colors. Alright, so there's his nose. I forgot while well, I had the quinacridone burnt orange thinned out that I could have done his hand. Because I think this wash was pretty dry now. It was a little strong. But just indication of a hand there. I didn't even rinse my brush between the deep scarlet and the quin burnt orange that I picked up. I just kind of blotted a good bit between the deep scarlet. So that's a, a decent shade there. I'm not, not unhappy with that. I'm grabbing the, uh, the neutral tint to go ahead. Just very gently going in here for the cane. And I know I am recording disaster just a touch because there is a possibility that that wash for the hand wasn't thin enough that it might bleed. And since I still have that neutral tint here, I'm just going ahead and very gently outlining some elements on the face. So we have a bit of the bird there. I'm going to go into the tail feathers with just a little bit of the Indanthrone blue. We're going to blot that pretty thin. So my brush is pretty dry. I'm just going to create the impression of feathers. Just a couple little ones on the back. 
here where you would have some shadows naturally occurring because of the, the light coming down. And I'm not going to do very many, just little taps here and there. And I should probably have zoomed in a bit because he is way off in the background. So now we're zoomed in. Now you can actually see what I'm doing. Isn't it nice for us both to be able to see what I'm doing? <laughs> Boy. Like I said, I'm all over the place today. So my apologies for not bringing you closer a bit sooner. And I know even though he's pretty far in the background, grabbing a little bit of sepia anyway. Just to indicate this line a little bit better. Like the top of the face. Putting some shadow onto his legs. Just across the top part where the uh, well actually all of his butt, all of his lower legs should be in shadow. Yeah, it's a good thing to remind yourself every so often is like, think about the light source. How is the body sitting? Where, where is it going to, to be casting shadows? Oh, that got a little bit better. I have a tiny bit of the Curbazol Violet. I probably should have done this under the hand. Like a glaze there. That's where I first was uh, learning about shadows and color use, was actually from Stephanie Law. I read one of her books, and I was going based off of that pretty, pretty well for like uh, just general ideas for skin tone mixes. So I think it was, uh, I think it was Dreamscapes. And yeah, you know what? Since I still have this here, I'm just gonna use this for the shadow color. But anyways, yeah, so I was using her general guidelines, so basically looking at the images, since I had a print copy of the book at the time, and uh, getting a general idea as far as like matching the ink tense pencils that I had with what she had in her book. Okay. And by doing that, I was able to, to go ahead and work out a pretty decent uh, portrait. And the, the purple did create some really interesting shadows. So I really, really like how that came out. Um, I wish I had a picture of the, the piece. Unfortunately, it was lost uh, during several moves uh, about three. No, it's a little longer than that. Jeez, that was, uh... Four or five years ago now. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, no, I'm wrong. Uh, five or six years ago now. Jeez. Time flies, man. Alright, so we have a general indication for the dodo. Um, I still actually have ten minutes left. But while I could... Go ahead and wrap up the stream and get on better schedule for tomorrow. I'm going to grab my bleed proof white because that puddle is pretty thin at the moment. Uh, because of mixing it with water, it's dried a little, little funky. So I'm just grabbing a nice healthy little dollop. Adding that back onto the palette here. And I'm going to, to just go in in a couple little spots and add some highlights. Because while I do find it important to go ahead and try to stick with the uh, scheduling, I also find it important to get to a comfortable spot with this and I'm realizing I didn't go back in with the 
Carbazol Violet on the Toto Bird. Because I did want to add some, a little bit of variation to these feathers. So this is a pretty watery mix. And now I'm thinning it way, way, way down. I don't know why I wanted to mix the two. It's really, I have the no real indication of like color change for the body of the dodo. Something was just like, no, no. You need purple and blue here. Okay. You know what? If my gut's telling me that, I'm going with it. And that is really, really light. But uh, that should go ahead and help give a little bit of color variation and some interest. In fact, oh, I didn't even dry my brush yet. I mean, sorry, they didn't even clean my brush yet. And now I'm going in with a little bit more of the Indanthrum blue. And try to indicate some little feathers on the wing a little bit. So that might be a purpley blue, and that is fine. I guess I don't want some interest there. Alright, and for this bit of detail on the caterpillar. I'm leaving the the hose for the hookah out still, but I feel like it is safe for me to add that little spark of life. So he should be dry enough where I can just do that. And the eye area on the caterpillar has been a concern for a bit now. I feel like I don't have quite enough water to do what I'm trying to do. So, that's the thing, the, the bleed proof white is so thick. And that is not a fault. That That is a wonderful, wonderful thing. But if you're using it for watercolor purposes, or hell, even if you're going you to use it for like gouache purposes, um, you need to go ahead and thin it out a bit so it's able to flow. What I want to do is I want to really lighten the whole eye area for the caterpillar and not just do a highlight. Alright, so now I've gone basically a little bit too light on the caterpillar, and that is okay. I'm going to come back in with some more detail later. While I'm here with this leaf proof white, I'm just going to pop a couple highlights here and there. Anywhere where I think I need them. We got some better highlights there that'll help indicate the metallic nature of that hookah. And mixing a little bit more white and water. This is that bleed proof white. I'm just seeing if if this will actually give me a highlight on this watercolor paper. So a lot of watercolor papers tend to be kind of cream tone. And I'm curious what this might give me. So I'm just adding a highlight there just because. And the pigment is pretty thin. So 
that gives me an idea between down here if it actually brightens the paper and up here just as far as covering power for where that uh that thickness is and while we're working our way down before we're out of time we need to go in here with some of those subtle highlights that i had been talking about for the jelly I know it is such a little thing, but those details really make a huge difference. And I need to remember that I am so zoomed in that I need to move the work surface as I go. And mixing a little bit more white and pigment because stuff is starting to dry. Ooh, that's that went a little faster than I was thinking. Okay, that's like exactly perfect as far as pigment to water ratio. Because I'm getting really wonderful details, but not so much over here, so I'm coming back over here. And I'm just going to gently dot them in. I'm not going to try to do the same pattern. That way it is like brighter highlights on some parts in here, and not on others. And you know what? I figure while we're in this neighborhood, I can go ahead and correct that spoon. And this seems like an entirely silly thing to need help with, but for the life of me, I'm my brain was just not seeing how to do the shadows on this spoon because I didn't have a reference. And it's not something I've practiced. So, this is my practice. Right, so a lot of times... It looks like in the bowl of the spoon is actually the lighter area. And on the edges you actually get darker, so I have this not accurate. And I keep vacillating between not quite the right ratio, a little too dry, but almost there. Wait, right, so go ahead and break this inner part of the spoon. I might need to do another pass of that just because of, of you know, pigment to water ratio being a little bit off. It's possible. I don't know if those pigment particles might be a little bit heavier because they are a little bit more opaque. So I'm not going to count that as the be all end all there. And now I'm just grabbing a bit of neutral tint because I don't want to lean this too far to the cool realm right now. I feel like I can get there just with a touch more work.
All right, uh, now you can see how those details as far as shifting the, those color values uh, really change the shape of an object and make it pop. Also using that high contrast is going to be what gives you uh, metallic effects. And uh, now I am slightly over time and I really need to go, but I have this white here. And I had forgotten to pop in some highlights for my alarm clocks. The bells on the alarm clock really needed just ever so gently. A little touch of highlights right there. Right here on this carrying handle bit. And that makes me feel better. All right, now I can leave it alone. All right, tomorrow is the frog footman. Uh, these talking flowers will be in place by then, and we can go ahead and move forward with the uh, random splashes on on the characters of Wonderland. Alright, so as always, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. And keep painting.